was on video. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us tonight. We have a very exciting start to our school committee meeting. Um, I just want to um, start the meeting. It is 6.30 p.m. Um, uh, Wednesday, March 6th. And um, I will just hand it off to you and let you explain why you're here and what this, um, what this special meeting to this large group of singers is today. Before you leave, actually, could I have your students help us with the pledge to the flag? I didn't catch you. Sorry. And then um, for the families in the audience, if you can stay just a few minutes after, 
um, the musicians, that would be wonderful because we have our student advisory um, does their presentation, and that's a great presentation to see what's happening in the schools. So if you wouldn't mind staying for just a few minutes, we would really appreciate that. Ready? Thank you so much. I'll give you a minute to walk out. Thank you so much, everyone.
patience, everyone. Thanks for staying, too. Stayed. Um, we're going to start with um, public input. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to make a public statement? Okay, then we'll move on to our student advisory report, which is Bourne Middle School this evening. Whenever you're ready. My name's Anna Conlin. I'm Sophia Sheehy. And we're here today to represent the students from grade eight who are here to share their experiences participating in both the Civic Action Project and the climate change documentaries. Um, though our eighth grade was cut short due to COVID, we were able to complete the climate change documentary and it was a super impactful project. Um, we weren't able to do the Civic Action Projects, but they have a lot to tell you, so make sure you listen good. <laughs> um. Um, for our climate change documentaries, we looked at global climate issues, and for our civic action project, we, look at, we looked at local climate issues. And for our climate change documentary, we picked an interesting topic, and we created a documentary to educate um, others about climate change. And for our civic action project, our projects are going to create change in our local community. First, we're going to talk about our climate change documentary. During the research phase, we worked together with our groups to learn as much as possible about the climate change and the topic of our interest. Ms. Parrish and thank you, and Ms. A. Flag helped us with our research if we needed, but mostly we did it on our own. Ms. Hay, Ms. A. Flag helped us, my group specifically, work with a person from a college and set up an interview to talk about climate change. In each group, each student in the group has a role, either climate, environmental, or conservation scientist. There's also a team leader and a communications manager. This is decided by each group. During my group's planning phase, we spent a few days talking about how we wanted our documentary to look. We decided on a talk show format who, which, celebrity, which featured a celebrity guest, Leonardo DiCaprio, who talked about the work he's doing to help reverse climate change. We also chose to travel around the world to show how different places are affected by climate change. During the planning phase, we also had to write a script, which included all the lines we had to say. So everything said on that documentary um, was in the script. We had to um, make citations and sources. Um, we made a very special thank you to our teachers, Ms. A. Flag and Ms. Parrish, and we had to have our editing cues on there, like um, laughing and applause. Um, in order to make our film as realistic as possible, we needed to come up with places to film. So we used like a variety of different sets. We used Ms. A. Flag's classroom with the green screens to make our backgrounds, and we also used the Bourne High School's TV studio to kind of make our talk show setting. Oh yeah, so the, I feel like the filming and editing phase was super fun because it was always getting me to look forward to class and I was always like in a good mood going to class. Like, and we had so much options to film. Like my group, we did like extra time. So we went to like gas stations. Um, uh, we went to the bridge. Uh, we went to the studio and the innovation studio. We also went in like the podcast room and that was all really fun. And like big thanks to the Born TV studio for that. And like the editing, it took a really long time, but it was all super fun. And we just enjoyed the whole time and it was a great experience for my group. We made movie posters to create advertisement to our films. These posters served as a reflection on the project and what we as students had learned throughout the process. While working on our posters, we had to get creative, use art skills, and we learned how to shout out our sponsors. And on the next slide, we have some examples of clips from our documentaries.
<laughs> now we're going to be talking a little bit about our civics action project. In the very first stage, we started off by examining ourselves and our community. We started by identifying the community we live in and their community assets. To kick it off, we had a 10th grader, Ana Demora, come in and speak to us about the Civics Action Project and what her project was about when she was an 8th grade student. She's now doing her own Civics Action Project as a sophomore, and she's had, like um, working on some of her own things. The next step was, conduct, was conducting online research, surveying, and interviewing community members such as staff and other teachers and students. We used our W&H research issues in born and local community. We surveyed our classmates and interviewed our classmates and staff members such as other grade teachers and the born high school principal. And lastly, we created a list of possible issues for students in, for the Civics Action Project. For stage two of the Civic Action Project, we separated facts and opinions and found out what the main issues were. Then we created and pitched our ideas. Stage three was the research stage. During this phase, we brainstormed root causes of issues and created graphic organizers in groups of people who are interested in the same topic as you. We determined central ideas and information of primary of primary and secondary sources. We argued and explained our conclusions using valid reasoning. We also got to interview teachers and students during this stage. At first it was a bit awkward, but we did, the more we did it, the more comfortable we got. Students will develop action plans, and students will then carry out various action plans to target a community issue. Students will showcase their work to the community. in May, so if any uh, community members, family members, anyone that you know is interested, we're going to be having an informational Zoom meeting next Thursday night, and all families will get the link to that Zoom, so you can spread the word um, for someone to come on up here and join us. Uh, another announcement is that we are extremely excited to have Dr. Joe sign on for another five years with Born Public Schools. <laughs> signed her contract, so she's here with us for five more years, so at least. We said she has to be here until she retires, but. <laughs> and the last uh, announcement is um, the Navigator Awards will be in the, we will present them in the May meeting, and so there's going to be some changes, and staff members will get an email regarding those changes in, um, around April vacation. So the Navigator Awards will open after April vacation, and this year we're adding staff members, so um, you'll be able to nominate staff member we're going to pick just probably two or three staff members uh, to award the navigator award to. And that is all my announcements. So thank you if you were here and you came and um, stayed and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. And we need <laughs> we need a, uh, a motion to close regular session with the intention to open the budget hearing. So moved. Okay, a roll call vote to open the close regular session to open the budget hearing. Donnell? 
Maureen? Matt? Yes. Harry? Yes. Paul? Yes. Harry? Yes. Yes. Okay. Regular session uh, adjourned and budget hearing is open. I'm sure everyone would hear me. All right. Is that a little better? Ooh, nice. Um, so for the principals, uh, for your budget slides, there is a mic right over here at this podium. So feel free to kind of come around because we'll get there pretty quickly or anyone else presenting a slide. Without further ado, we are going to get it rolling. And then knowing that tonight is also a big basketball game for our uh, Lady Canalman, uh, we're, uh, we're going to get our principals out of here as soon as possible, and we will take up the announcements right after the budget hearing. Okay? Great. Let me get this into presentation mode. Sure. Okay, well, welcome. So our budget presentation is very similar to years past, where we'll tell you our different uh, assumptions, priorities. Uh, we'll hear from each of our principals and program leaders, and then we'll give you uh, some of the numbers in the snapshot. Very similar slide than in the past. Uh, please enjoy all of these beautiful faces of our children, which is really what this budget is about. Uh, but do know that we involved multiple stakeholders to create it, and we looked at it from many different lenses so that we can serve all the needs of our students. Here are our timelines. We hope that our budget process will end um, at the annual and special town meeting on May 6th, and that uh, everyone will be in agreement that this is what we need for our kiddos. This slide looks really similar in the past. Uh, one big important point is that there are no ESSER funds that will be available to us going forward. We have a solid plan. We have uh, used our plan to spend down over the past few years, and going into next year, those funds will be spent down. Our overall increase, this is a little spoiler alert, is 2.83% uh, over last year, and we're using our different revenue assumptions. Can I just stop you for a second? Absolutely. So it's on that screen. Okay, it's not on. In our, it's, it's in the drive as well. It's linked. Okay, thank you. Linked on the agenda. Yeah, because it's a Canva, I can't put a, okay. a PDF. Sorry about that. That's okay, and I can pause too till everyone gets it up. I also don't know how well the feed's coming in for cable because we could angle that a little bit more. But I wanted to make sure people could see it at home. Okay. I'm sorry, you guys can't see it. Good. Keep trucking. Okay, great, no, thank you for stopping me. Um, everything's connected to our district strategy. Uh, we're in uh, year three of our district strategic action plan. Um, and so these are our major pillars, building community, promoting equity, and striving for excellence, which spell out BPS, helps me remember the three pillars. And then also linked here, because this is already on our website, are all of our school improvement plans. Okay, now let's get down to business. We'll hear first from Borndale Elementary School, and you'll hear about um, what this budget will fund in the school. This is just a snapshot because we really already had a lot of words on the page, but this budget funds everything that our kids need. And I'd like to welcome up Lisa Dix and um, Michelle Siedo and Elizabeth Carpenito. Uh, so we're going to continue with ARC uh, as our primary resource for ELA, uh, just with a, ma a major change being that we scale back on the um, intense PD. Um, we, are, we will be in year five of implementation already of ARC um, next year, so uh, we are going to handle any PD in-house. Um, we're continuing also to work with Allison Mello. Um, she is the uh, math expert that brought math workshop to us. She will be back again next year and we are awaiting word on the continuation of that HQIM math grant. Our win in CPT continues with student and staff feedback. It's really data driven. It's really focused around what our students need most. And we're trying to incorporate a lot of the RISE training that we've been participating in.
Um, it was tough to divide these up because everything that we're working on is so intertwined. So even if slides didn't necessarily pertain to one of the three of us, it's something that everybody is working on as those common goals. Um, we've been really grateful to continue to have our interventionist in our budget for next year. Um, she's one of those pivotal pieces that's a point of access for students, for staff, for families, um, whether it's working in CPT, she's on our student support team, um, providing interventions for our students, providing resources for teachers. She's that link between our professional development and back into the classroom for the teachers. Um, she's part of parent conferences and being able to help explain that piece as well to the families. Um, so again, just a really pivotal point um, to highlight in our budget for next year. Oh, and then finally, we're always looking for ways to improve our benchmarking process. Um, and as always, any changes will be made based on feedback from the budget, from staff, and um, continuing to align with the consultants that we've brought in and any grant money. Next. Any questions for BES? Thank you. All right, thank you. Next, we'll welcome up Team BIS. I believe Lisa Dix will stay. <laughs> and I believe we have Amanda Colby and Jane Norton. Hi, everyone. Uh, first, I just want to say thank you for the town to, for continuing to support the schools. Um, it's just great to see that they understand what it is that we're trying to do for our students and so their financial support. Continued financial support is so important, so we want to thank them for that. So um, the first, I put the enrichment programs um, after school and before school programs up, up first because that is something that we definitely continue to look at to maintain what we have, but also to expand. And we're happy to announce that we're adding pickleball which <laughs> has been all the rage. So we're just starting that coming up. It's starting next week before school, starting with a smaller number, and we're sure it's going to grow. And we actually hope it's um, a staff wellness um, adventure, too, as well, that we can get everybody um, into that. So we're very excited for that. The other one is the photography club with um, Jillian Donovan, the art teacher. And so we're really looking forward to having that with a little bit of help of the high school camera equipment that um, Jillian wrote a grant for years ago. And so we're looking to start that this April, so we're excited about that. But through that, through All Star and through the music after school and so forth, everything else we do, we, we can uh, just see it's really leaning towards that middle school model of teaching the whole child, and it's just been amazing. Uh, the other uh, great thing that we've seen this year and thank you to Dr. Starkey for spearheading this. And obviously it was because of the newcomers that we got, we had come in at the beginning of the year, but it's been an amazing uh, evolution throughout the year to see not just the, um, the expansion of the services with the additional staff, but also to see that push-in model happening in our classes uh, to really support the tier one instruction in terms of the whole language and so forth and having the kids use the work that they have in those um, with our ESL teachers to actually practice that right in, during tier one instruction. So it's really important. Uh, in terms of, um, I won't have Lisa speak again, but I know that it's pretty much everything for Borndale that, that she said in terms of the math um, consultant, Allison Mello. And I think for me, um, one of the changes is that I've seen is just really seeing teachers excited about math again. It's not, it's just, it's not only the workshop model, but how to implement it in really feeling like the district is working at supporting the tools and the manipulatives that we need to teach the workshop model. Um, but also, you know, over the years we've always, even with Desi, we've heard about having to have a literacy plan. Um, but I think the difference, one of the things that Allison has brought to the table is having a math plan for us. So it's not just um, aligning you know, our Eureka math uh, with the state curriculum and so forth and aligning our assessments and coming up with tools to help with our benchmark system, but it's also to have that vision. You know, what are the basic foundations that um, the students need early on that need to be in place to have students successful over the years? So actually having a math plan has, is really something that we're excited about and the teachers 
really see and feel the support with that as well. Uh, in terms of ARC, that um, even though we've kind of wrapped up the professional development of, in that, we definitely have seen that it's been effective in terms of teachers being able to access resources for their students and, and for their lessons in their classroom. And just the more we use it, the more features that we see that are available and the more texts that are available to our students. So that's been uh, wonderful for us to maintain. Uh, I remember going back when we had Laurie Kasn here and she was introducing the wind block to us and she said to me, Janie, it's really a three to five year process to figure it out. And I think at BIS we really have felt that, especially with the changes in the number of home rooms that we've had. Every year we've had to kind of tweak our wind block because of that. And uh, this year for the first time we really were able to have um, six of our unified arts teachers involved in every, we, have, we use our wind block over three different grade times to maximize the interventionists. Uh, but to have them involved uh, for every grade level, all six of them in all their, their content areas has been a, a big change for us this year and it's been really enriching for our students. So we've been very excited about to be able to continue that next year. And then in terms of our special education, you know, we've had our um, de professional development with Deb Harris and Tanya and uh, I think you can really see our special education staff really buying into that. But just to see those students in class more, in less of that pull-out model, it really helps for their sense of belonging within the classroom, which I think has been amazing for our students. So to me, to all of us, uh, the, those are really the important things that we appreciate the budget being able to maintain for next year. We have a direction that we can go in. Whoever's here. <laughs> no, thank you. Do you guys have, do you want to have anything you want to say? No, but thank you for asking. Okay. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you. All right, we have Team BMS coming up. And I believe here tonight is um, Christine Borning, Kate Hartley, and I just see Jesse Clements. It's a very live stage. <laughs> a lot of mics up here. Good evening, thank you. Uh, in, if you're looking at the slide, you'll see that the theme for the middle school is really the continuation of the support that you have uh, the town and the school committee has been offering for the middle school for a number of years. Uh, we ha are in the second and third year of implementation of a number of high quality resources uh, for each of our subject areas, springboard and ELA. Uh, we have a math text that I think we're in year three of implementation. We have investigating history for social studies. All of that is continuing. Um, we are utilizing IXL as one of our main um, intervention tools for students. It's a digital program that has been very successful. Students are very engaged with it. It really um, tailors to the students and provides quite a bit of data. So that is something that you will see continuing. Uh, we are continuing our work as um, Jane spoke about as well with Allison Mello in our math department. So she has brought quite a bit of focus to our math teachers um, just in terms of alignment, strategies, looking at how we can continue the work that's coming up from BIS so that the students are building off of what they're learning from the math teachers there. So we'll be continuing uh, with that professional development and are eager to continue with that. Uh, we have a schedule with a special educator on each team, so one inclusion special educator per team. And we're really grateful for that to be able to continue, for the special educator on the team to be part of the team and to be able to really support the student across all areas has been, um, I think, very beneficial for all of our inclusion students and, of course, to continue with our two programs as well. Uh, we have our media specialist who not just serves as our librarian and a resource for all uh, teachers and students in the library. She also teaches our study and research skills class, which is a sixth grade foundational class. Um, and kind of paired with that, we continue to offer theater to all sixth graders where they really do learn those phenomenal presentation skills, some of which you saw on display tonight. The kids were so well spoken. Um, and just really brave, I think, in front of each other. Um, and also serve as, you know, both that enrichment of theater, but also doing intervention with directed support. And that, so we're continuing with that and appreciate the continued support for that. I think that really brings a lot in terms of fleshing out our programming and um, supporting our students in all areas. And then finally, um, Jane mentioned her extracurriculars, and I think that's something we continue to be very proud of at the middle school. We have a very, um, 
it's a very active place to be from 2.30 to 3.30 at Bourne Middle School, and that takes a lot of financial support, and teachers and students alike can come forward and suggest things they want to do, and we, uh, we just love that, so we appreciate that. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so coming on up is uh, Dr. McGuire, Team BHS with Jesse Clements, and continuing with Kate Hartley. And Mr. Deneen is down the hall with us in spirit at the um, chaperoning the basketball game. It's, um, it's wonderful to see that this budget is a reflection of our values and of our needs at the high school, and it's a collaborative effort with our administrative team, with our team leaders, uh, with our school council. So to be able to um, share on the next slide the um, information that we have here, like the middle school, a lot of continuating, uh, continuing items here, but also just really um, al allowing this work to come to fruition. So our budget um, highlights include continuing to expand rigorous coursework in pre-AP and AP programming. We'll continue our partnership with Mass Insight uh, and offering 18 AP courses at the high school, which is just incredible. Um, continuing to implement and expand innovation pathways in school to career programming. This fall, 100% of our seniors will have an internship or capstone experience. In addition, we'll continue to promote our pathways in healthcare, business, environmental life science, education, public safety, government, arts and communications, computer science, and engineering. So options for many, many students. We'd like to continue to support high quality tier one instruction and inclusion special ed practices um, through our trainings that we've had with Springboard Rise and UDL with a focus on strengthening standards-based objectives and increasing high quality student discourse. It is so important for us that our students understand the targets, they understand the knowledge and skills that we're asking them to become proficient in, and that they're able to use those skills effectively and can um, really self-reflect on where they're at in their learning process. We'd like to continue to evaluate and replace our curriculum resources and textbooks to support those high quality learning experiences for all students. Continue to support our wind block interventions, utilizing a variety of data points and metrics developed and monitored by various teams at the high school. Um, like Mrs. Norton, Ms. Norton just said, that WIN is a multi-year process and we feel um, like we have the model in place and we have the structures in place and now our students are benefiting from that strategic um, grouping and intervention option through, through WIN at the high school. We'd like to continue to offer rich and diverse co-curricular and athletic opportunities to all students. We're always adding in those areas like DECA this year. And to continue to strengthen our social emotional supports for all students. We've done a lot of work this year around mental health and suicide prevention. We're so grateful that we have two counselors and two adjustment counselors at the high school. And we'll continue to touch upon different areas of needs with our students. All right, thank you, BHS. Thank you. And now I'll start passing it down the line because um, I'll tell you a little bit about proposed changes and then I'll start passing it down the line. So this next slide is really about um, any, any changes here which are kind of minimal. So one thing I think you heard a lot on the slides are continue, continue, continue. We're excited about continuing because like I said, the ESSER funds really brought a lot of these staffing positions to us three years ago and we found a way to work them into the general budget um, and or through offsets. So we're able to continue a lot of that good work that we've been doing. Uh, but some of these reallocations are based on student needs or programmatic needs. So basically it's a net neutral budget. So we'll reduce one interventionist position at BIS because there was two for a while because the need was really great. So we'll reduce one and we'll add an ESL directed support teacher. So that's that third ESL teacher we keep talking about, but she also is licensed in many things, so she'll be able to provide some directed support intervention-like um, practices in her schedule. The other um, reduction and reallocation is reducing one PE position at the high school. Again, through scheduling right now, we see that we can still schedule for every child, um, but we'll be adding a physics engineering position. So again, it's, it's a net neutral one in and one out. Uh, programmatic, we're continuing all current programs. As you can see, some of them are really flourishing. Um, so you know, we're continuing that and augmenting. 
And then the last piece around equity that we feel really strongly about um, is that we're eliminating all activity user fees and all transportation fees in the district. Because again, if we think that our co-curriculars are something that every child should participate in, we don't want any family to have to go without. Uh, we did give scholarships in the past, but now it'll be a no questions asked, zero user fees. So we're pretty happy about that. All right, so now I'd like to pass it to my right, to Dr. Starkey, to talk about teaching and learning. Good evening. Most of what you'll hear me present tonight, you've already heard from the building principals because the work of teaching learning is teaching and learning is taking place in their buildings. So uh, my portion of the presentation tonight just highlights much of what you've already heard. Classroom instructional supplies are needed across Bourne Public Schools. Uh, topical and timely curricular-based activities that happen in each of the buildings. A renewal of instructional materials and subscriptions across the entire district. Renewal of our assessment platform, the, the primary platform is Galileo. Renewal of online text resources for teachers and students in particular. Uh, a continuation of our year three implementation of Springboard, the ELA resource at the middle school. A continued implementation of pre-AP at the high school. Continued implementation of innovation pathways and the education pathway at the high school and purchase of updated instructional materials, in particular at BHS, uh, in the areas of health, science, and ASL, American Sign Language. We move to the next slide. Uh, also in the Department of Teaching and Learning is professional development. You heard some of the names tonight that you've heard over and over again. Uh, Allison Mello, Laurie Kasna, folks who've been coming into the district for the past three years. We'd like to continue to offer quality professional development for our teachers by bringing back some of the consultative services that have been really beneficial to their practices. We'd certainly like to continue universal design for learning. Uh, in particular, working with our ESPs in the district who've had some very high quality professional development over the past two years. We'd like to continue that. Again, continued implementation of the math workshop model that you've heard so much of. Expansion of our math support into grades six through 12, which, which we did this year, and we'd like to continue that. We'd like to continue uh, curriculum evaluation alignment writing and revising in particular at the high school uh, facing an EASC visit soon. Continued district course offerings, so in-house offerings and mentoring, uh, English language learner supports, a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a refresher of our data resource subscriptions, in particular Open Architects, which you've heard about here at this meeting, uh, a new application that we're using in the special education department called the Blue Map. And uh, other items such as PowerSchool. I'm sure Mr. Oliver will talk about those. Uh, we'd like to continue to allow our teachers to self-select workshops and graduate level courses and, and take all of those outside of the, uh, the working day. We certainly would like to train our staff in new instructional technologies, in particular AI. You heard a little bit about that already this evening. Training in the adoption and implementation of the new IEP, which I'm sure uh, Ms. Donnie will talk about this evening and consultation on inclusive practices that would continue with Dr. Deb Harris, who's been here in the district. And then obviously everything we do is contributing to our multi-tiered system of supports um, in which we hope to rise all of our, help all of our learners to rise. Questions for me in particular? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Next, I'll be talking about uh, technology for FY25. So in speaking with Mr. Geis, we both thought it was important to have the overall technology budget uh, here. So uh, for next year, we're, um, we're requesting $475,021. Out of that, 205,000 is for technology equipment and network infrastructure, and 270,021 dollars is for technology salaries. That makes up myself, my network administrator, um, as well as a, a, ESP, a technology ESP. So, what does this support? Uh, it certainly supports um, all of the technology in our district across uh, all our schools in our central office. Uh, in addition, uh, it supports our network equipment and services. It also supports our subscription costs for all our support across all of our all of our infrastructure, as well as the uh, very important data backups uh, across for our, our Google accounts, as well as all of our servers that get backed up uh, to a cloud service. In addition, uh, yeah, in our firewall. Thank you, uh, Mr. Geist. Uh, in addition, uh, uh, that also includes our internet circuits, so all of our internet, our fiber optics for the uh, district, is, 
Um, in addition, our continued upgrades of Windows computers. So every year, um, as part of the technology strategic plan, uh, we try to upgrade a certain amount of computers across the district and bring them up to the latest version uh, Windows operating system. Also includes our antivirus and other subscriptions uh, along those lines. Uh, we're also planning next year, uh, I put in an application for uh, federal E-rate funding. Uh, that's what gave us uh, the Chromebooks as well as that was the ECF portion of E-rate. Um, all of the Chromebooks in addition, uh, that also helps to subsidize our internet and our uh, wireless connections, our Wi-Fi. So 60% uh, of that is gonna be funded through E-rate and 40% will be funded through this local uh, technology operating budget. Uh, we're also looking to consolidate and streamline print services and continue upgrades, uh, streaming, uh, streamlining security in our uh, camera systems across the district. Um, and last but not least, obviously the daily supportive classroom uh, and office uh, technology through our work order system. So I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have about technology. Thank you very much. Last but not least, um, <laughs> so I, um, as you know, the special education budget is very driven by individual students' um, needs. So I will talk in big buckets. Um, the largest bucket, one of the large buckets is our social emotional learning and counseling components. Um, so we'll be continuing to augment the college and career and counseling offerings that you've already heard from the high school and Dr. Starkey. Um, ongoing collaboration regarding emotional and behavioral regulation. So things including our QBS training and different behavioral regulations and um, consultation with different vendors for support um, for um, student specific case management. Um, and we obviously will continue district-wide our B2B and school-based groups and social-emotional learning that happens in a variety of ways from lunch groups to individual sessions to specific um, targeted groups like grief groups or, or things like that. Um, so specific for special education, um, the budget helps to fund our extended school year programming. We are expanding, as you've heard me say a couple of times now, expanding more in-district options. Um, as our caseloads continue to grow and our needs continue to vary, we're looking at trying to support more and more students. So the new IEP uh, rollout is a major component of what will be happening next year as it becomes more and more of a mandate. And as we know, the new IEP is going to be very data-driven. So we're looking at data collection tools and resources in order to make those documents really efficient and effective uh, for planning. Ongoing continued collaboration regarding our inclusion and co-teaching model, as Dr. Starkey mentioned, continued work with Dr. Harris um, and supporting the development and the schedule design for that, and continued support for our student services, um, and really more emphasis next year on having our um, support providers, speech, OT, counseling, also push in into that co-teaching model a little bit more as appropriate. Um, so getting them to be more supportive in the classroom as well. Continued growth of our CPAC, um, which is up and running and very great. And again, um, just to reiterate, it's, it's part of student services, um, the continued three support, for the three teacher support for the multi grades for our English language learners. Okay. Any questions? All right. Good evening, everyone. We should be looking at the uh, slide with the two pie charts on it. Just talking about the big numbers briefly uh, for the FY25 budget, $26,652,537. I broke it down into two separate pie charts so you can sort of get a visual. Uh, clearly, salaries make up the vast majority of that budget. I will point out that the student services number is, um, also includes anyone who is involved with student services and their salaries as well. Um, maintenance and utilities is coming in at about 1.6 million. That would be our maintenance and custodial staff and you know, the roughly $270,000 that we budget every year just for repairs that come up to maintain the buildings and deal with any uh, emerging needs that, that we have. Transportation is down from last year uh, at 1.4 million uh, due to a number of our buses the vast majority of our fleet coming off a lease, so we will not be carrying those costs next year. Uh, that is something that we will have to look at moving forward um, as we plan out how we're gonna move uh, the, the, the busing program after the following year. 
uh, with the collaborative or maybe going out to bid. Teaching and textbooks came in at about 382,000 teaching materials. Any questions on that? My beautiful pie charts there. <laughs> the next slide are the offsets. Um, Four million five hundred twenty-five thousand two hundred ninety-two dollars of offsets uh, for FY25. That's down from this year. This year's number is about four point six million. Uh, that really largely reflects that you know last year or this year we're using up um, about six hundred twenty thousand dollars of the remaining ESSER funds, which won't be available next year. So even though we're spending less offsets, we're spending more offsets from the typical places that they come from. Circuit Breaker, Foundation Reserve, or Military Mitigation and School Choice are the predominant. We also have a large number of just federal and state grants coming in at 772,000. Any questions about offsets? Moving on. Also just created a quick chart to show you the year over year increase so for FY25, as was stated earlier, we're at 2.83%. That does reflect the fact that the town did do the um, SPED reserve transfer into FY24 of $100,000. So we're at 26652537 There's a link in that presentation to the entire budget and line items, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about the entire document. Sure. I, I have a question. I'm just curious why sports, so for fall sports, why the increase had gone up so much? Is because there were no sports touring? So, so the sports are so somewhat of a moving target. You know, we're trying to, to plan to um, incorporate no user fees, so things that would typically hit an offset of the athletic revolving fund, we're trying to spend that down next year and supplement from the budget and then in the following year completely take it over. So it's just looking at, if you look at the trends, which I give you on the, on the big spreadsheet, year over year what we've actually spent, it was just trying to move, move the money into the appropriate places. So you will see a, an overall increase to athletics this year, um, but the individual s seasons have changed depending on what the three-year running average was. I'm, I'm not aware of any change. As far as I know, the, the program is in place and it's going to stay that way. As far as if they've made an adjustment to the formula, that hasn't come my way yet. Next steps? Sure. Oh, back to slide. I think we've gone over those numbers, but $26,652,537, 2.83% increase. It's an increase of $734,174 from this current year. Keep rolling. 
All right. So our next steps in the in the process are obviously um, finance committee, board of select person, you all voting to recommend the budget, watching the state budget process as it winds its way through all their committees, and you know making any refinements if necessary based off of that, and then going to town meeting for the vote. Any questions? Thank you for saying that. that we're, we're pretty proud of all the work that everyone put in to keep those programs so strong and to do all that and yeah, to have the budget to support it. We were a little worried this year, I, I, I'll admit it, but um, we're, we're making it work. We're making it work, so we're excited. Okay, so we need a vote to recommend the fiscal year 25 budget. So moved. Second. Okay, we'll do a roll call vote to recommend fiscal year 25 budget. Dunham? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Matt? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mark? Yes. Yes. And yes. Okay. Everyone is in favor. Great. Thank you. Budget crew, thank you so much for all your hard work. Wonderful. <laughs> thank you to all building administrators for all of your hard work. Thank you. Great. So, um, if the building administrators would like to take out of order, Madam oh, Chair, to I do. Have to close out of the budget. I'll let you close first. Thank you. There's a motion to close out of the, the budget here to reopen uh, our scheduled meeting. Second. Okay, roll call vote to exit out of the budget meeting and reopen regular session. Donnell? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Mag? Yes. Barry? Yes. Paul? Yes. Yes. Barry. Yes. Okay. Regular session is re entered. Great, so I know we have a, a field trip, but I don't see the presenter here. He was expecting it to be a little later. So when he comes, we'd like to take it out of order. But then also, if we could go um, right to announcements and correspondence. So um, we'll take up the upcoming and past events, and if we can start with BES. And I will call your attention to one thing in the folder while, you, um, while Liz comes up. She'll be talking to you about some really important and exciting events, and some of that work is linked to a document that you have in the folder that she'll tell you a little bit about. It's not linked on our agenda, um, but it is the copy of the BES uh, vision final draft. So if you have a computer, if you want to click on that, it has all the little um, happy graduates. Thank goodness I don't have to watch them graduate just yet. but. Um, so this week, well this month, even though it's a long month, if you will, with no breaks per se, um, we certainly pack a lot in. So this week uh, is Read Across America week for us. Uh, the kids and Mrs. Dix uh, had come up with, and the literacy team, had come up with some really unique themes for this week. Um, so not just dressing up as favorite characters, but really delving into their favorite books or pulling that in. and starting our day with a healthy walk, but that was actually incorporated with a book walk around our building that the uh, Media Center Specialist had set up. So just some really neat themes that got the kids going, talking about their favorite books, reading their favorite books with each other, um, kind of the true spirit of Read Across America Week, which was really, really nice. Um, also, we had Michelle Cusolito, which is a, um, an author. She was part of our literacy night where we were able to sell some of her books for the students. 
And then she came and did two different assemblies for our students on Monday to kind of kick off the week. So that was really great as well. Uh, it is also National School Breakfast Week, most important meal of the day. So the uh, Chartwell staff has created some fun incentives across the building. For us, the students race down there to see if there's a sticker on their bag because then they get to go to the prize bin. And there's nothing better than starting your day getting a prize bin. So they've had a lot of fun doing that and um, it's increased our breakfasts in the morning, so that's been great. Um, keeping up with our ocean theme, which was our literacy theme and Michelle Clusolito's books, um, our PTA is putting on a um, Borndale boardwalk evening for um, a bunch of uh, motor group activities and things such as that, so that'll be fun. That's next Thursday. Uh, we have the Science Guy Assembly who is coming in. The students are working for their grade level reward. Hopefully none of them are watching because we've already booked it because we know they're going to earn it. Um, and then that is the week, I'm sure uh, Mrs. Dix will talk about it as well. That is the week of Symposium, um, which is a great event and all of our families love it. Um, we are super excited because on March 29th, your invitations will be coming out this week we have our first career fair with our interns and our second grade students. So we are thrilled for this event. It started off very small last year, kind of dabbling in conversations with the high school, with the interns. Um, I don't think we make it much of a secret that we're always trying to show our littlest learners what is available to them, not only at Borndale, but also in the schools and in the community as a whole. Um, so the, the work this year has really been pretty amazing in watching the kids take that over. Um, so uh, at the student spotlight at the beginning of the year, we talked about the career hop where the interns came and presented to the students. Um, that has fully turned around to the students meeting with one another. They're teamed up now in the career fair at the end of the month. That's on March 29th from 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning. Um, the students are going to host their own table for that occupation and that career. Um, and they have some great things that they're going to be putting out for you. I will not spoil anything. Um, but part of that work is what you um, are looking at in your folder. Um, when we started having these conversations with the students in the student council, it, it was bridging that gap, teaching them what a graduate actually is. And what is it that you need to have as those skills in order to be prepared to graduate from high school. So this process started with our staff. We had two different meetings on it. It went to the parents, and the parents further whittled down those, those choices. And what you see in this document is a culmination of what the kindergarten through second grade students came up as the most important traits in each of those categories that they feel is important for them when they leave Borndale to be prepared so that by the time they want to graduate high school, these are the foundational skills that they feel that they need. And a lot of that came out of meeting and talking with the interns from the high school um, and hearing those conversations with them and wanting to be very much like them. Um, this is the list that they came up with. So this will also be part of the career fair, but we wanted you to have a glimpse of that as well. Um, and last but not least, kindergarten registration will be coming up at the beginning of April. Uh, that information is going out to all of our families as well. That's going to be April 9th and April 11th. So we're excited because then we're getting our newest batch in. Any questions? Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Carpinito. Uh, Lisa Dix will present for BIS. I can just say ditto to a lot of things. <laughs> Um, March is Music in Our Schools Month, so uh, all month long there will be Recorder Club, After School Band, and the Grade 4 BIS Singers uh, meeting on different days throughout the month. Um, again, National School Breakfast Week and um, Read Across America Week. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing all those uh, great character costumes on Friday. Um, Today, we had the Mashpee Wampanoag uh, come and present to our, all of our grade three classrooms about history, culture, they brought artifacts. The kids learned a song, they learned how to count to five in Wampanoag. They did a little stomp dance, um, so it was really fun uh, all day today. The BIS Friendship Club met this afternoon. They did a big arts and crafts project. There's a parenting workshop series. Um, she's got a link here for a flyer with event details. Um, 
the Parent Caregiver and Community Member District Strategic Planning Input Survey, uh, and a Candyland dance. The PTA is putting on a dance this Friday from 6 to 8. This is not a drop-off event. <laughs> um, <laughs> The BIS Healthy Action Team starts pickleball on Monday, as Mrs. Norton had mentioned. Um, our grades close and report cards will go out this month. There is a Born Education Foundation fundraiser event coming up on Saturday, March 16th. There will be an MCAS infrastructure trial, <laughs> getting ready for MCAS season at BIS. And uh, then we'll round out the month with the Steamposium, which we have been uh, planning for several months, so I hope that you will come out. It, it always is a well-attended event. Uh, we've got all the schools involved, um, kids from all different groups and, and science classes. The theme is carnival, um, and we'll have a midway with uh, games that the kids have been working on in the STEM labs. So uh, hope to see you all there that night. Thanks. Great, thank you. So many exciting things. I don't know if the Healthy Action Team will be happy about the Candyland dance, but I think they will. That's right. Work it off in pickleball. And that's right. <laughs> all right, Ms. Borning, BMS. And you're doing uh, BHS as well, yes, right? Yes, I'll do all secondary. Great. Uh, at BMS, uh, March, we are also celebrating National Reading Month and Read Across America. Uh, we came back from vacation to a spirit week to celebrate reading. Um, the days included Reading is Relaxing, a PJ day, which uh, was great on that Monday coming back. Uh, reading makes you successful. Students wore college sweatshirts, or sweatshirts, <laughs> uh, and reading makes us bright. That was the most popular day, a lot of 80s gear uh, for that day. We have daily trivia throughout the month, um, and teachers have been provided with a range of activities to support as well. Uh, many thanks to our librarian, Sarah Riggle. She's done all of the heavy lifting on the planning for uh, this month, so we appreciate that. Uh, we also, Building Wide kicked off March with a B2B challenge. Students can earn tickets for demonstrating expected behaviors, um, and they redeem their tickets for like a scratch off. Prizes include homework passes, uh, time with Shelby, uh, win time in the gym, uh, and some other exciting things. We're well underway with cycle four of WIN. Most of our WIN groups have an MCAS focus, but we also are running some extension activities such as robotics and also a number of enrichment math groups. Uh, kids are all settled into that, which is nice. Takes a little shuffling at first, but they're all where they belong now. Uh, we are very excited to welcome tomorrow Ruth Bluestone. She is coming to meet with all of our grade six students. Uh, she is a local resident who previously lived in South Africa and our students are currently um, studying Africa. So we're very excited for them to be able to experience that visit. Uh, students have begun rehearsing for our METG Junior um, production, Cave Dream. The show is already coming along. The public performance will be Friday, May 3rd and the competition is that weekend as well. Uh, we continue to have uh, plenty of after-school activities running. We have sewing club, yearbook club, art club, select choir, um, and our courtyard club started back up, so it must be spring around the corner. They started cleaning up all of the limbs and debris, so that was very exciting. Uh, and we have, our PTA is running March Madness on March 22nd. This event is for students in grades six and seven. It is a drop-off event, so parents, you're welcome. Uh, it was the, we have sumo wrestling, we have Zoom we have temporary tattoos, really something for everyone, and we're really looking forward to having our 6th and 7th grade students there. So, and we, of course, will be participating in the Steamposium as well, so March will be uh, a long but busy month. Uh, at the high school, lots going on. Boys hockey and girls hockey co-op with Sandwich finish their seasons in the playoffs. Uh, swimmer Sam Reno is a standout participant in the co-op with Old Rochester Regional. Sam finishes 10th in the Division II state meet and 7th overall at South Sectionals. Boys basketball beat Monomoy in overtime last night and will play in the Elite Eight on Friday against David Prouty High School at 6.30 here at home. And girls basketball is playing as we speak. I believe it was 27.30 at the half. Uh, last weekend, we hosted the, ME, the high school hosted the METG Drama Festival competition preliminary round, and the BHS students did a phenomenal job on and off the stage. The METG drama play Macbeth has made it to the semifinals and will compete on Saturday at Weymouth High. Students received recognition and awards for set design, lighting design, the Three Witches acting ensemble, and acting with Logan Broadway as the title character Macbeth. 
Music teacher Lisa Fournier will be presenting at the Mass Music Educators Conference. Her topic is investing in our students, creating community in our classrooms. Senior Aspen Langley will also be presenting and is performing an original song at the DCU Center on March 21st. And then connected to that, Molly Lodge, Jay Gary, and Aspen Langley will all be singing at the Allstate Music Festival at Symphony Hall in Boston on March 23rd at 1. We are getting ready for MCAS season with an infrastructure trial on Monday. This gives students the opportunity to practice logging in, using all the tools available online during the test, and to answer a few questions on the simulation site. All of the 9th and 10th graders will receive new Chromebooks in advance of the test as well. For Read Across America, librarian John Lee Roy is facilitating a book recommendation board in the library where students can add books they recommend and others can ask questions of those who have read the books if they are interested in learning more. The book recommendations display is designed to increase dialogue around book selection and help prompt more reading at the high school. Finally, the DECA students head to States tomorrow and we wish them luck as they head to Boston. There is a clothing pop-up store open to everyone at the schools and in the community linked on the website with proceeds benefiting the DECA program. We are all excited to be planning to open a DECA store at the high school in the fall. So that is everything from the high school. And I also believe Rand is here if you wanted to jump to that. Thank you. All right, so I've got, while we transition, because Dr. McGuire is back as well. Yep, Dr. <laughs> McGuire came back. Um, so we'll queue up for the uh, Costa Rica trip. Just a little precursor, so April is month of the military child, and I wasn't sure when this event will be, so I wanted to make sure that I got it into this meeting in case it was very early. But we're working with um, Commissioner Orzali uh, to actually present the governor's proclamation this year here at Bourne, at Bourne Intermediate School. So we'll make sure you know when that event is. It will be very special in April. Um, so let's queue up. The Costa Rica trip. We're welcoming to the stage Rand Pugh and also Dr. McGuire is back. And I hope our girls are doing okay out there. They are fighting through. There's about two minutes left. Oh my God. It's close. Very exciting. All right. Let me open it in the Canva. Um, give me one second, please. We are so excited for this trip for kids. Mm -hmm. This is such an opportunity from the cultural perspective, from the science perspective. Yeah, absolutely. We are actually um, sharing this trip with a science-based uh, charter school in uh, Spencer, I believe it is. So they're, they're, they're pursuing it from the uh, scientific angle, I think. Yeah. But, uh, I think our yeah, best bet exciting. is going to be the PDF right now. So just keep yeah. rolling. Is that okay? That's fine. That's good. Sure. Everybody can see it. We have our copies here as well. Um, so, um, many of you uh, probably remember from a year ago when I proposed the trip and you're gracious to approve it and allow me to start to uh, recruit. And we have uh, 17 students and a parent to accompany um, three chaperones. And um, we can, uh, we'll be leaving on Friday the 12th. Um, and so it's a, it's a quite an early flight, but we are going to get there uh, three hours ahead of time, like 2.30 in the morning. Um, but uh, we have um, uh, flights to San Jose that uh, get us in there in the afternoon, and um, uh, I don't want to necessarily go through the, our entire itinerary unless you want me to. Um, it's, I, I don't want to, you know, extend your time too far. So how... how uh, how much would you like to? Well, it looks great. I know. Can we go? Well, the presentation <laughs> is excellent as well. Thank the, you so the, much. There's so much. They're doing yeah, so much. Really it's really jam-packed. It's um, and and I have uh, planned for tomorrow night a uh, a Zoom call with uh, parents as and travelers. I met with travelers today, and we just uh, one of my messages was to um, really just be ready to go because our days are full, they're gonna start early, and uh, we usually um, will probably be leaving you know, late, um, early morning, probably around eight or so, and not be returning back to our hotels until after the uh, evening meal. And we really just try to sandwich in two to three activities depending upon um, what there are. Now, uh, one of the days is uh, exclusively, uh, we're gonna spend all day at the Manuel Antonio National Park, which is, one of the uh, uh, very few, the only in Costa Rica that is a, uh, 
it's a coastal as well as a uh, rainforest, the, the kind of the two uh, meet right at that point. And so they, the park involves both um, you know, the, the ocean as well as um, uh, rainforest. So all the you know, flora and fauna that goes along with those uh, environments are gonna be, um, it's gonna be a really full day. So um, perhaps uh, some of the things that you, uh, highlights that you might like to hear about, we have uh, kayaking planned. Um, and also, uh, just before I do that, I've made clear today and will also tomorrow night that no student is required to do any of those activities. If they are uncomfortable for any reason, whether it's a fear of water, of heights, or whatever. Horses. Yeah. Uh, horses. We have one uh, traveler that's allergic to horses. So um, with our three chaperones, and um, we, one of us will do something uh, to uh, replace that activity. And it's also one of the things that uh, our tour director, uh, she and I will be talking and communicating before the trip so that she can know exactly what it is that we're trying to get out. What are some of the things that we want to really emphasize for our, for our travelers to see? So um, we have uh, the, the kayaking, we have a visit to a hot springs, we have uh, hiking in the uh, Arenal Volcano National Park. We have a um, we have a zip line tour. We have um, horseback riding, as we mentioned. Um, we have a visit to a biological reserve. Uh, students are going to get a chance to plant their own tree. Um, Costa Rica, about 60 years or so, uh, was completely deforested. And so for the last uh, 30 years, they've been embarked on a program of reforestation. So we're going to learn about how they uh, have done this, how they've carried out these plans to, to try to um, you know, refurbish and restore and then preserve. And uh, we will also have a little bit of free time at the beach. Um, there's a crocodile safari. Um, there is the visit to the National Park, as I mentioned, uh, one of three. Um, and then we also will do a visit to a village on the way back to San Jose that has uh, a lot of um, artisanal, uh, like uh, handcrafted items. It's a kind of a craft village, I guess you might call it, and it's a, a chance for kids to get some of those last minute things, souvenirs and such for their folks at home. And. Um, so uh, we'll also be reviewing tomorrow night some of, the, uh, some of my safety uh, things that I wanted to emphasize uh, that are in the presentation. Um, one of my uh, main things today was uh, to communicate to them that we're not only uh, just representing you know, uh, our school, but we're also, as a country, uh, we're representing you know, our, own, our own home. So we were kind of approaching it with that that um, the cultural sensitivity and to also, um, you know, really uh, kind of adapt and go with the flow, encounter new things, experiencing them, and, you know, take away from it uh, as not just a, a vacation, but as, as, a, uh, as a real cultural experience for them. Are there any other points with someone else coming in? Questions? Um, yes. How many students are attending? We have 17 in our group, and the group from Spencer is uh, 18 students. Um, so we have uh, additionally just some of the uh, some of the safety things that um, that you know might be uh, of concern. Uh, there met any sort of medical needs, whether they be behavioral health or you know physical health. Um, they, we have uh, uh, not only the, the tour director, uh, who is a, an Explorica uh, employee, but lives there, has local connections, and knows you know, how those, um, those sorts of, if it was an emergency, what would need to be done. We have, uh, it, the communication is immediate between um, myself, if, if we encounter a problem, to then, through the tour director, to Explorica, and then there's also a 24-7 uh, line uh, via phone for the uh, medical staff in Costa Rica to be able to communicate with medical professionals here in the United States. 
and also, of course, uh, communication, you know, with parents, of course, is paramount as well to kind of uh, make sure that that's, you know, all bases are covered there. Um, some of my other additional things is uh, I've, I've said that, you know, and I, and I know it's not going to be the last time, but emphasized that we do not do anything alone. Nobody goes anywhere alone, and I have em I'm emphasizing groups of three or four, uh, emphasizing, you know, things such as, um, you know, leaving, leaving expensive jewelry at home, you know, judicial use of, of uh, expensive cell phones, you know, to kind of just be aware of their surroundings uh, more than anything. And so that we can, um, you know, bring them home all in one piece and with all their possessions as well. So. We would love to have um, an update after the trip. Oh, yeah. We have some students coming. Absolutely. Out. Yep. And uh, so we'll, we'll take lots of pictures. And uh, as I did with France and Spain, I collected pictures to kind of, you know, put together a nice presentation for you guys and uh, look forward to doing it, again, doing it again. I think we're really in for a, a good one. The, uh, the temperatures, it's like in the 90s down there. It's the, we're, yeah, <laughs> it's going to be quite a, quite a good experience. They, it, it's the end of their, uh, their dry season, so hopefully the weather's going to cooperate with us. And if it's not, we'll just roll with it. And uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Great. So you need, uh, we need a vote to final approval. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just want to just um, thank you for all the hard work that you put into this and providing Thanks, man. a great opportunity for people. Like, I remember you were talking about it in class last yep. year, and it was so amazing to see all of, all of it unfold for you. And I'm That's so awesome. excited to thank see you. everyone. And it's Thanks a lot. to hear all the chatter in the school. Yeah, really yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's, it's, it's really kind of picked up in the last couple of weeks. And so i am get, gotten some people wandering in asking questions because they're just kind of trying to anticipate what they're going to come across. And, and uh, it's, yeah, thanks a lot. It's, appreciate that. Okay. Let's take a vote. Final approval. That way you won't have to stick around for the rest of the meeting. <laughs> we, um, we need a motion to approve the Costa Rica field trip. So moved. Second. All those in favor of approving the Costa Rica field trip? Aye. Aye. Nice. Opposed? Excellent. Great. Enjoy. Thank, Thank, you so Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So Great. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so we'll keep trucking on a little out of order. So you, you've heard a lot about the different months that we have here. Um, as a former music teacher, I just always love music in our schools month. So thank you for having that beautiful choir up here. And I love the multi-age that we had as well. Really, really beautiful thing. A quick thing I want to show you on our website, we now have a Youth Art Month uh, art gallery. So every school is represented. We have, um, again, it's, there's so much beautiful artwork. Uh, but it's representative of each school, so you see BES. I know my screen's a little large for those viewing at home, but um, I want to thank Mr. Oliver for putting this together for us. Oh, the big announcement. The girls won. Yay. <gasps> Congratulations, Yay. Born High School! Woo! That's very exciting. All right. The artwork's exciting, too, but that's very exciting. Um, so you can see, please visit the website, please scroll through, uh, look at all the beautiful artwork on there. Um, and I hope this will be a tradition where we can keep loading it with student artwork and then um, they'll be able to see their work there. There's multiple from each school. Um, youth Theater Month, I mean, especially last month we had so much amazing youth theater. If you think about um, the All-Star Review and the Willy Wonka Jr. And then, you know, I, I was able to see Macbeth, which was just phenomenal to see a full-length Shakespeare play cull down into less than 40 minutes. Um, Well-deserved acting awards and scenic and design awards just, just floored us. Um, and they moved on to the next round. And then, as you know, our junior MTEG is already practicing. I believe it's called Cave Dreams. Did I get that right? Um, so we're looking, looking forward to great things. Um, and then you heard it was National Reading Month. It's also um, Women's History Month. And for all of us Irish people, um, we like to wear our green in March. So um, I'm going to... Give one more plug for the strategic planning survey. Um, we're going to extend it to March 15th. We want to give it one more week. So I'm going to push that out via email so that all of our families know that we're still looking for input. If you just haven't gotten around to it yet, please fill out the survey. And now I'll pass over to uh, Dr. Starkey, who will tell us about our Student Opportunities Act submission. Hello again. The Student Opportunities Act, uh, created in 2019, 
requires that schools fund uh, particular programs for high need students. So this is an allocation of money coming out of the Chapter 70 money that the schools already receive. So when the act was first passed in 2019, the first plan that was submitted on behalf of Bourne Public Schools was to bring a second ELL teacher into the district. At the time, you had one, uh, and there had been a rise in that particular population in the district. So the allocation of money from Chapter 70 under the SOA umbrella was used to fund a second teacher. So if you're looking at the slide presentation, the, uh, the actual first slide with information on it gives you the history of how much money was allocated uh, each of the years of that plan in order to sustain having two teachers here in the district. So what we did in order to write our renewal of our plan, or, or should I say, to submit our new plan, uh, was take a look at the data to see what would happen if we were able to retain, or what we think could happen, if we could retain our third EL teacher here in the district. And you've heard a little bit about that tonight, in particular when Principal Norton spoke to you about BIS and the benefit of having a, an EL teacher in her building. So we took a look at the, uh, the data that was available to us, and we noticed that having two teachers in the district, we think, uh, helped to increase the access to required EL services here in the district, because now you don't have one teacher, you have two. And it helped to improve MCAS and access scores for EL students. Access is the annual testing that EL students engage in, and that happens in the winter months of January and February. And it, in particular, tracks the progress of EL students. So we noticed that there were, some, there were some really good results. We also noticed an interesting decline in student growth percentiles for EL students. And that is in part because uh, some of the things we'd like you to consider, the fluctuations in the population of EL students. So for example, if you go back to 2019, we had 15 EL students in the district. And you may all recall that when we opened the school year this year, we had 80. And in between 2019 and the 80 that we had in uh, October, I'm sorry, in September of this year, there were peaks and valleys in that number of students in the district. So it is a, a bit of a transient population for us here in Bourne. Um, students are at various levels of uh, when they're EL students. You're level one, so you're a non-English speaker, all the way up to a student who's level four into level five, or an FEL, which is a former English language learner, so a student who has felled out of the program. That's a phrase you'll hear. So, uh, And another thing that you need to know, here in the BPS, we employ a sheltered English immersion model. So all of our EL students are in class with their peers, and they are pulled out for EL services. When, they, when we have the benefit of additional teachers in the district, we can also push into classes. And the push-in model, which is really a model we use for inclusionary practices here in the district, is very effective with students. So in looking at, at, at the data, we decided it would be a good idea to seek the school committee's permission, because that's ultimately what we need, uh, permission to submit our plan to retain a third teacher using our SOA funds. Uh, we have seven target areas. I need to put this down. I can't talk to you with this in my hand. So the echo is driving me crazy. Really so my apologies. <laughs> so let me just, let me talk. If you can't hear me, I'll talk to you later. How's that? Good. Can you hear me? Good. You just, you All right. you just hold it a little far away, because that's our bike to board. Oh, okay. One, one, All right, there you go. One one I don't want to create a, compli a complication for anybody. Thank oh, thank you. That's lovely. <laughs> our level one and level two students in the EL program are considered foundational, and our level three and level four students are transitional. They both re uh, require and are heavily recommended by DESE to have different uh, numbers of minutes for service. So when a student comes in and they're a level one student, DESE recommends that they have 90 minutes of pull-out instruction a day. Right? And when students progress through the program, it's recommended that they have less. It's not required, but it's recommended. And it's recommended based on evidence that suggests that that much time is what an EL student needs to master English. So having a teacher is going to increase our student access to the recommended minutes. Will we hit the recommendation? Likely not, because it's an incredible number of minutes for level one and level two. But we'll be quite a bit closer if we retain our third teacher, and in particular keep that teacher at BIS. Uh, we will continue to improve our EL students' MCAS scores, and I've shared with you some data. Our students are, are doing fairly well, but could certainly do better. Uh, and having a third teacher, in particular, one that's here at BIS, where MCAS begins, uh, will likely have, have result for the students. 
We'd also like to continue to improve our EL students' access scores. So helping them to move through the program and become FEL, as we spoke about a minute ago, sooner. Keeping that third teacher will also help us to address DESE policy changes. Some of these things you'll hear about in more detail uh, as the months come and these policies are truly put into effect, but we will be required now to screen and offer EL services for our pre-K students. So if we're able to keep that third teacher, so to speak, here at BIS, we're leaving our second teacher, who we got with the beginning of this plan at BES, she'll be there to screen and provide services to pre-K students. Uh, another thing coming down the pike is once you take a student in in pre-K and they are enrolled in the EL program, those students need to be re-screened with a different screening tool when they're in kindergarten. So it's, it's time consuming. So having another teacher will, will help, uh, help us to identify and screen those students and keep them in the program. Um, having that third teacher will also help us to meet the requirements uh, that are coming down the road with the exit criteria for FEL students. So as I said to you, students fell out of the program, they score a certain number, and, and, and oh my goodness, you're out of the EL program. Well, some of the changes coming down the road indicate that FEL students need to be monitored more. So once they're out of the program, we don't just say, good for you, go off and have at it. We have the ESL teachers monitor those students for their progress. That monitoring will now include routine meetings with classroom teachers, continued conversations with parents about progress directly with the ESL teacher, and ESL teachers doing observations of those students in classrooms. None of that was really required to that extent before, so our EL teachers will be doing more work uh, to keep those F FEL students, the FEL students, monitored as they progress through the BPS. So having that third teacher will help us do that. Uh, we also believe it will help our EL students with their attendance. You can notice there that 31% uh, of the students were hitting, uh, were hitting it chronically absent, and we simply can't have that. The stronger connections that our students have to teachers, the more likely they are to come to school. And putting an EL teacher in a building is certainly going to uh, help those students, and, and it's going to help with parent communication around the importance of attending school. And last but not least, we'd like to add opportunities for our EL parents to be more involved in their students' education here at school. For example, one of the things we're planning on doing is beginning an LPAC, much like the special education parent group. We'd have a parent group for our EL parents. And Principal Carpenito is very excited to be uh, the person spearheading that. Uh, in addition, we'd like to continue to offer evening opportunities targeted for our EL population. We do a back to school night specific for EL parents. We do an end of the year recognition ceremony for the students, and we'd like to continue to offer other opportunities and help <coughs> those parents integrate into some of the activities that we already have. So that's really what we, what we believe we can accomplish by having that third EL teacher retained here in the district. And with your permission, we will uh, submit an SOA plan indicating that that's what we'd like to use the money for. The last slide in the presentation simply uh, explains to you how we are complying with DESE's regulations because you, can, you can't use the money for just anything. You have to, in particular, meet strategic object objectives that have been set, set apart by DESE. Thank you for your attention. Do you have questions? Thank you. There are plans that a substitute could implement. It's difficult in general right now to find substitutes. And, and just a, uh, a point of clarification too, it's, it's very challenging to find EL certified teachers right now. I believe we have 22, but we have a number of students who are fell. So when you look at our total number right now, it's almost 39 students that we're servicing and tracking across the district. It's a, it is a very transient population in our district. Okay. Uh, any other questions before we take a vote? What do we 
would you need to vote so that this can be updated? Approval of the, the submission of the Student Project Maintenance Act. Second. Okay. Okay. All those in favor of the submission of the Student Opportunities Act? Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you, Barbara. <coughs> Thank you. I look forward to I look forward to writing that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then I do have one other thing to share with you this evening. We are once again offering summer enrichment in the Bourne Public Schools. So there is a flyer in your folder and a flyer that went out to the community uh, at least once and is set to go out a second time. Uh, we are offering four programs this summer, kindergarten, kindergarten readiness for our incoming kindergarten students. That runs for two weeks, July 18th, sorry, July 8th through July 18th, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 and that is $300. We are running BES, BIS Amazing <coughs> Me Wellness. That is for current kindergarten through current fourth grade students. Once again, July 8th through the 18th, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., and that is $300 for the two weeks. We are offering BMS, BHS from page to stage, and that is a study of The Merchant of Venice uh, with, a, with a production, a culminating production. That's for incoming six through 12 students. That runs from July 8th through August 1st, Monday through Thursday, nine through 12. That is a four week program and the cost is $400 per participant. And our other program is the BMS BHS Musical Theater Program. That is for incoming six through 12 students. That runs again from July 8th through August 1st, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, that is $450 for that four-week program. Anybody interested in signing up can access an email or find it online. All of the registration information is there, uh, and we take payment in cash, check, or online. One last note about summer enrichment. Sign up now because the programs do have caps, and we have, some in, we have folks who have already enrolled their students, so please do so. And just a reminder to parents that this program necessitates parent transportation. really nice form it's very I like that everything's on one page and the link is right there I, I think that's gonna make it really easy for parents so So this information went out through uh, an email blast to all the parents in the community. Uh, it has been on Instagram, and I believe it's been on our Facebook page, and there'll be another round of all of those forms of communication coming up. If you have other ideas, no, certainly sure. open. Right. While I'm at it, I'm, I'm looking down at Ms. Fuller and I'm remembering, we are also offering credit recovery at the high school, but it's, it wouldn't be on this form. It's not an enrichment program. Great. Thanks. All right. So trucking right along. Um, we do not have a budget and facilities update because it was a budget hearing. So um, we are going to move into our technology update. Mr. Oliver? Good evening, everyone, once again. Uh, the Technology Committee met yesterday uh, after our first meeting was canceled due to the one snow day uh, that we had uh, this calendar year. Uh, so we did have the opportunity to meet. Uh, there was about uh, the, our biggest turnout so far uh, yesterday, which, which I was happy to see. Uh, we went through MASE policy, uh, technology policy recommendations. Uh, these included current school committee policies with updated language and new policies that are based on the ever-changing technology and data landscape around, uh, around the country, really. Uh, other than some minor uh, recommended changes to the draft language that we thought would be helpful, uh, everyone agreed to move the policies forward uh, to the policy uh, subcommittee. So whenever the policy is subcommittee is ready, we're happy, um, I'm happy to present. Uh, we had some continued discussion around technology integration and the best ways to support classroom teachers uh, with technology in the future. Um, and I also provided the committee with some updates on uh, technology projects. And uh, that is the update for the technology committee. Happy to answer any questions. Yes. Can you a little, give us a little bit more information on the, dis what the discussion around controlling? Abs the yeah, absolutely. So we have a variety of technology in our classrooms across the district. Each school 
uh, since I've been here for a little over two years. Um, I'm trying to get the technology as consistent as we can across all the schools, but um, BIS is a new school. Uh, the high school is older. Um, so what we're trying to do is, one, we're trying to make sure that we're streamlining the technology across all the buildings, right? So it's consistent, especially not only for our classroom teachers, but also for our substitutes. I hear this, um, I've heard this several times from, um, I would say, probably all of the schools that are, uh, the substitutes that we have have to, learn the technology differently in every classroom. So that's one, that's one piece of it. And it's also important, uh, one of the things that uh, Dr. Starkey and I have been discussing is trying to plan some uh, technology, uh, technology professional development day in the future. Uh, we think that's really important uh, to train our staff um, on what we have, continued uh, uh, technology that we've had in the classroom, and also um, what we're looking to bring in um, it's always important. It's great to go to the, uh, the town meeting and ask for these big capital outlay articles uh, for touch panels and all that, but it's equally important, right, to make sure that we offer continued training to our staff. And that's one thing that I'd really like to try to focus on now that we're, the infrastructure is almost in place, that we can start working on the, uh, the technology uh, integration piece into the curriculum. So does that answer your question a little bit? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> thank, thank you. Anyone else? Should I pass it to? Thank you. I just have a few updates. Um, we're continuing to roll out elements of the new IEP. Again, the forms aren't quite aligned, but when we can, we're trying to incorporate some of the thinking and uh, the layouts within our own system as much as we possibly can so it's not kind of shocking um, when July 1 rolls around and it looks all different. So getting the teachers and, and families um, used to what that how that's going to look and feel. Um, so work in progress there. Um, continuing to work with CPAC and the Federation for Children. There'll be a presentation on the new IEP specific to families on March 20th. So we are prepping that flyer and getting that information out, which will um, help. And then we'll do it in March and then probably again um, in the summer um, so that as people are starting to think about coming back to the back to school, um, just kind of a refresher. So um, that's well underway. And continuing to work with Dr. Starkey on the PD plan for the 20, 20th um, regarding some of the offerings, including behavioral regulation, again, regarding that behavior management and strategies um, from some of our staff. ESY is well underway in the planning. Teacher positions have all been posted. Um, ESP positions are due out this week, so that's um, coming together nicely. Parent confirmation letters will be going out as well within the next two weeks so we can help design bus routes. So all those important details are, are happening. Um, and lastly, um, just came in today, a thank you to the Bourne um, Police Department. They have donated four to-go backpacks for our nurses. Um, we had always had emergency to-go bags, but um, as the requirements of things to put in those to-go bags has grown and student needs has grown, the organization of the bag system really um, was becoming cumbersome. <laughs> um, so the, the backpack is, is not a traditional just kind of book backpack. Um, it's got compartments and things for medical supplies and all of that. So um, a sincere thank you to the Born PD um, and our nurses are working to make sure that they're all well staffed and ready to go. So thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The emergency supply things that we need if there's ever um, a crisis where we have to evacuate for the whole school. So it's really different depending on each school. In a, there's some standard supplies, obviously, Band-Aids, um, gauze, those kinds of things. Um, there's some water bottles or whatever. And then they have, in each for each individual school, if there's any emergency medicines that are needed for students, they have a way to capture that and some documentation that goes with that. Oh, You're welcome.
So that concludes the superintendent's report. Okay. Thank you, and I'll pass this down for all of the different um, committee reports. All right, subcommittee reports. Um, Maureen, I'm not sure if you wanted to do curriculum or if you want me to do curriculum. I mean, I think everything was covered already. <laughs> so, okay, it was all covered by Dr. Starkey. So thank you, Dr. Starkey, for doing that. No I'm just going to. Okay, <laughs> policy subcommittee, we met on February 28th and um, we discussed a few different policies. We discussed um, changes to policy EFC, which was put forth by MASC. Um, uh, some of the things we discussed is that, um, so this is a policy for universal free school meals. And in the policy, we discussed the, the fact that it states that households have to apply using an application. Um, but we are not a school that, um, a district that uh, collects household applications. Um, but rather than removing this section, we are just going to keep it in place um, in case anything ever changes. changes. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, we didn't need to make any changes to this updated policy, and we um, are suggesting that it come to the full committee for a vote this evening. So you've had the policy in your folder, and hopefully you've had a chance to look at it. Does anyone have any questions on policy EFC? Um, I did on the, on one of the sentences and it says that each student is entitled to, and then it says one free snack when provided by the district. Yes. What is when provided by the district? So certain districts provide a snack. Our district does not provide okay. snacks. So okay. um, again, we left that in there just in case anything ever changed. We didn't want to take any language out, but um, it's not provided by our district. So we can get a snack. Okay. Much more. <laughs> <laughs> well, all this time, we haven't been getting one. <laughs> uh, any discussion or questions? Okay, then we need a vote. Move approval of policy EFC. Second. Okay, all those in favor of approving policy EFC? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, good. Policy EFC approved. Um, the other policies we discussed were EFD, um, and that's the school lunch account policy, but that needs further discussion at a building level. Um, since the start of COVID, we haven't charged, there hasn't been a fee for school lunches, so um, accounts haven't really been regularly used, so there needs to be a little bit of discussion. Um, Terry's going to contact, consult the building administration and the food service director to see what changes are necessary and then we'll add this policy to a future agenda. Okay. Um, and then there were no new job descriptions um, and mask updates. Mask usually puts out a March newsletter, so we'll look forward to those updates because that'll probably be a bunch of policies. <laughs> um, and then an update on KF-RKG-E, which is the fees um, for the field use. Again, that's still being discussed. Um, uh, the town with the town um, the town is going to be maintaining the baseball fields um, but we still have our soccer fields which uh, are on Town Public School property and they do require maintenance and that comes at a cost um, but they are used by foreign rec sports so uh, our district is looking into some type of fee schedule and creating funding structure to charge for field use um, for uh, town and recreational um, groups, nonprofits, and out-of-town groups. But that wouldn't be until fall of 2024. And that is it for our policy subcommittee. Okay. Budget and facilities, Paul? Sure. <clears throat> we actually, uh, again, reviewed issues on the budget that were presented today. But I'd say the most important conversation that we had as a subcommittee was something that the school committee will be facing sooner rather than later is an issue around the middle school room. Uh, there are issues around understanding exactly at what date we can take the solar panels off so that we can begin to look at the construction of the new replacement of the roof. You know, we're looking at a budget item that it could reach over $3 million. Um, there are multiple routes that we could potentially go. There's just an awful lot of variables between mm -hmm. the solar panel, between whether the MSBA will supporting us are we smarter to try to to uh, work with the town 
and go around and find another way for funding. So uh, we do have a meeting next week with, with Tim Fon to, to discuss this, but it's gonna be a, a public, it's gonna be a major issue. So I think it's everyone needs to be aware of um, and we'll do our best to make sure that the committee is well aware of all the issues around it, but it's gonna be a major issue for us. That you know, we will need buy-in at the town meeting level as well as with uh, you know, different groups from the board of selectmen and Tim Fon over the town. We met on Valentine's Day. <laughs> and, um, the director that oversees both programs is, uh, has given her notice. She's working with her other friend who used to be our director here. So she's um, got that posted. I think they discussed it on their previous council. Um, but they also are discussing the, um, the summer advanced student leadership program that goes on at Mount Maritime. facilitated this um, educator development opportunity. The flyers came out. Um, one opportunity is for the paraprofessionals who have associate's degree to that want to get a teaching degree. Um, they're facilitating women's book who have <coughs> for a two-year associate's degree and then do this program seamlessly transfer into her job search hmm. and get her to That's get awesome. a teaching degree. So they had a Zoom meeting on the 28th with each group um, to let her know about it and so she can have her degree in that as well. It is really, um, if you're 25 or older, it could be a very um, inexpensive or less expensive mm -hmm. way to go. Um, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. I don't want to put them on the spot, but I, I went to my very first meeting on Monday. Very exciting. Um, and I mean, I didn't really know how much I could talk about it, but I'll tell you one thing I'm excited about. Um, the Born Celebrates Everyone event. We're having our first meeting um, on Friday. And, um, oh, excuse me, I have something else written down. We're looking to And have the event after. Have the event after. Whatever you need to do. Okay. <laughs> we'll make we'll vote on it. Or? Yeah. 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 No. We'll, I think we'll be fine okay. doing that. If, yeah. If I could. Yeah. We want to put those events. They, they should be a priority. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. Um, the book. Yeah. Well, so we kind of split it into two groups. One is with the born um, celebrates everyone, and then the other half. So you have about 20 members on that committee? Yeah, yeah that's a big group. That's really great. I know, <coughs> that's exciting. Yeah, good. Great to have yeah. more community members, yeah. and have your book study with us, mm -hmm. and then we can all celebrate. Yeah, and we'll have it on uh, Zoom as well, some of the book clubs, too, so that'll be, that'll be nice. Great, thanks.
Thank you. And technology committee, is there any additional? No, I yeah. just realized uh, that for senior year, that I had given you my technology committee update during the fiscal technology update. Oh, well, that's okay. You so didn't even have to tell us. The <laughs> only thing I will add to the technology is that since our last uh, meeting, uh, that we've gotten about 300 children out of the student loan. Oh, that's great. Okay. Yeah. Anything additional? All right, very good. Um, we just need a few votes. Uh, we need a vote uh, to approve warrants and payroll. Motion to approve warrants and payroll. Second. We need to roll call vote to approve warrants and payroll. Sorry, Zach, you're the controller on this one. Tana? Yes. Maury? Yes. Harry? Yes. Call? Yes. Harry? Say yes, okay. Warrants and payroll approved. A vote to approve regular session minutes from 2 7 24. All those in favor of approving regular session minutes from 2 7 2024. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, regular session minutes approved. We already approved the Student Opportunities Act. We approved Policy EFC. We approved the fiscal year 25 budget and the code three field trip. So, last, we just need to approve the superintendent's contract through June 30th, 2029. Money, money, money. <laughs> I know, I, I can't. That's <laughs> a good question. Paul, you can say whatever you'd like. Go ahead. No, you don't want to say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're kind of like it's not really going to come. You know, I just want to make a point, and I don't know who's watching at home, over from the town. But I think it's important that everyone understands that we have a document here to be voted on tonight in terms of our budget, right, as, as, as the group that governs our school. And now we're, you know, now we're voting to approve the superintendent's contract through June 2029. And people might ask, why through 2029? Realize we're being consistent here. That we see a vision, we see consistent leadership, we see investment in staff, we see right, we see our enrollment growing. All the right things are happening. These aren't disparate things that we vote on at a meeting, right? It's about direction, it's about leadership. There can be critics who can say, well, why so long? Well, could 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 question things in the budget, right? And let's face it, anyone who's ever had a long hot shower has their own ideas about things, which, which I understand, right? <laughs> However, realize that year in, year out, since Dr. J's been here, we've been moving in a certain direction. We've seen administrative staff change, but the direction is just accelerated in the rate at which we move in it. That's what real leadership is about, and that's what we're investing in, both in the budget, in the vote that we took today, and in this contract. So, you know, nothing is, is, is done easily, nothing is done you know, to, um, to just complete a task. We voted consistently, and, and we've got, you know, leadership coming between the leadership that you provide and the leadership that we deal with Dr. Joe. We're moving in the right direction. Why would anyone in any way want to, want to look at it in a shorter term? Again, we'd like to see here for the rest of your career. We believe in what you're doing, and, and you know, it's, so it's not just about the vote and your contract. It's about all the votes that we're taking, but especially the ones tonight, both in the budget, right, and in your contract. It's all alignment here. And, and, and I think I can speak for the, for the entire school committee saying that we're very, very happy with the direction that we're moving in, and we're putting our, you know, we're putting the town's money you know, where my mouth is. So again, you know, congratulations, and, and thank you for willing, being willing to commit a, a large part of your career here with us and to, to our students and families. Thanks, Paul. I'll make a motion to vote to approve the superintendent's okay. contract We're for June 30th, 2029. <laughs> okay, we'll do a roll call vote to approve superintendent's contract through 2029. Donnell? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Zach? Yes. Harry? Yes. Paul? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> contract approved. Thank you very much. Okay, um, student spotlight in April is going to be BIS. We will talk about the Navigator Awards in April. Um, some middle school field trip um, final approvals. Um, and I think that is it. Any final thoughts or questions? Okay, then we need a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. 
Okay, roll call vote to adjourn. Sign up. Yes. Maureen? Yes. Max? Yes. Harry? Yes. Oh? Yes. Gary? I say yes. Meeting adjourned. It is 8.32 p.m. Thank you, everyone, so much.